All right, guys, so this question is going to be more about toxicology. And go ahead and look at the question first. You know, pause the video and see if you can answer it correctly. And then at the very end, I'll come back and see if we can talk about kind of where I got it from, the, the article. Uh, and I think it's a good question. Uh, it really hits a bunch of different points. Uh, definitely something you got to know for your step exam. So uh, give it a try, guys, and we'll come back at the end and talk about this. All right, guys, so the question reads, which of the following mechanisms best explains the cause of the young girl's symptoms? Is it A, adjustment disorder, B, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, <clears throat> is it C, inhibition of muscarinic receptors, is it D, inhibition of nicotinic receptors, or is it E, activation of muscarinic receptors? All right, so let's read this. It says, an eight-year-old girl whose family recently located, uh, I should say relocated, to the local area so her father and older brother could find seasonal work on local farms. Uh, <clears throat> The young girl enjoys her new school and is doing well academically. She reports that she has been making friends at school and likes her teacher. She has no prior medical issues other than having uh, ear tubes when she was uh, six years of age. She has been recently complaining of drooling and watery eyes. Which of the following best explains the cause of the, of the young girl's symptoms? So kind of broad, but you know, what, what are the facts that we know? Okay, obviously <laughs> she's eight. Uh, they, her family recently uh, recently re relocated to the area, and they work on the farms. And all of a sudden, she really has no medical issues, but she's complaining of drooling eyes, drooling and watery eyes, which are obviously not uh, not normal for an eight year old girl. So, what are we thinking? You know, based off this, the USMLE uh, likes to kind of test your knowledge on this, and so this whole farm deal and this. What kind of response is this? Number one, okay, she's having drooling, uh, drooling and watery. This is a wet response, right? Uh, now, so, so when it's wet, we think what? Too much acetylcholine. If she was dry and 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 all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, not sweating and stuff, we would think anticholinergic. So let's go back and before we try to answer this. You know, is there enough evidence to say adjustment disorder? There's no stressor, right? She's saying that she enjoys school, so there's really not a stressor. And, and just an adjustment disorder is having a stress within three months and having an exaggerated response to the stress. But she's saying that she enjoys school. She likes her teacher. Um, and that wouldn't exactly explain drooling and watery eyes uh, either. Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Well, Munchausen syndrome by proxy means that their, say, caregivers or somebody, you know, in a position of power to them are making them sick intentionally, uh, you know, so that's like, like the by proxy. Uh, but there's no evidence to, su to support there's a Munchausen thing going on here. So now we're down to the inhibition of muscarinic receptors, inhibition of nicotinic receptors, or activation of muscarinic receptors. And so it would have been a lot easier if we just would have said acetylcholine receptors or something like that, right? Because this can kind of scare people off a little. But anyways, let's go back to what we do know. And we got to understand, you know, acetylcholine, okay? So say if we were in a, here in a synapse and there's acetylcholine right here, and eventually we, we want to release him. Now, before we can release him, we got to have, just like typically most things, sodium comes in, uh, then eventually it kind of goes down to the the charge goes down, uh, the neuron or whatnot, and then calcium rushes in, and then it hits a certain threshold, and then acetylcholine gets released. And then there's gonna be on the receiving end, kind of a postsynaptic, there's gonna be an acetylcholine receptor, and he'll sit here, right? Acetylcholine will sit here. Now, when acetylcholine is done, there's a thing called an acetylcholine ester, acetylcholine esterase, which says, okay, Mr. Acetylcholine, you're done now, time for you to, to get off the chair, and then he'll kind of be recycled back um, here, and then he'll come off the chair, and also he can go over here, and he can bind to the uh, presynaptic uh, side of things. He'll bind on the presynaptic, and then that'll, that'll, of course, decrease the acetylcholine. So, so that's more of a natural response. Sodium comes in, calcium rushes in, releases acetylcholine, comes across, sits on the receptor, does his job, Mr. Acetylcholine esterase will, says it's time for you to, to get off the chair and gets recycled. And so that's normal, okay? Now, what kind of receptors are there when it comes to acetylcholine? Well, you gotta be thinking, you gotta, you gotta know this, okay? There's muscarinic and there's nicotinic. There's muscarinic and nicotinic. And when you think muscarinic receptors, you know, M1, 
M2, M3, M4, M5. And I want you to think these guys are G protein linked. Okay, G protein. And then you got nicotinic, uh, and these are considered ligand uh, gated, you know, kind of like a, you know, sodium per se comes across, it hits, links. Uh, I always think the gate opens and things like that. So ligand gated. So the muscarinic or G protein, remember seven transmembrane, and you got GS, GI, GQ kind of stuff. And so I want you to know the GQ, we got GI and GQ for right here. And really it's M1 through M3 are the ones that we typically, uh, that we that we use and they, they test you on. So again, acetylcholine receptors, you have, you'll have muscarinic and you'll have nicotinic. Muscarinic or G protein, nicotinic ligand gated. Muscarinic, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. When it comes to M1, M1 can increase uh, increases calcium, and that'll increase the gastric release, okay? Increased gastric release. M2, okay, M2 increases uh, the potassium channels, hyperpolarization, but ultimately what you need to know is that it decreases heart rate, okay? Big, big key one here. So right now we got M1, increases gastric release, M2 decreases heart rate, and M3, pretty much everything else, you know, M3, it's almost like the company 3M does everything. Uh, you have smooth uh, muscle of the eye will contract, okay, so there's your meiosis. You'll have bronchoconstriction, and you'll have increased sweat salivary, and you'll have increased GI peristalsis, okay? And then when it comes to this nicotinic stuff, okay, so that's, so anyways, there's your muscarinic, G protein, GQ, GI, GQ, M1, M2, M3, and you have all these symptoms. Now, this is normal, but if we do too much, now imagine this, if we do too much, if we have too much acetylcholine, what am I going to have? Excessive gastric release bradycardia, I'm going to have uh, meiosis, I'm going to have bronchoconstriction, I'm going to have excessive sweating, excessive salivary uh, secretions, um, diarrhea, right, increased GI peristalsis. So when if I have too much acetylcholine, you know, everything is wet, okay, think wet, and then that's going to be your, how they say, the dumbbells, okay, dumbbells. And the D stands for diarrhea. The, the U stands for urination. Again, wet. M, meiosis, muscle weakness. The B, bradycardia. The E, emesis. The L, lacrimation. And then your S, saliva, uh, salivation. Again, everything here is wet. Now, if I had too little, too little acetylcholine, what is it going to be? It's going to be dry. <clears throat> and it's real easy, right? Because it's just the opposite of all this. It's just the opposite of all these, of all these receptors, right? It's, so I'm going to have, instead of a, a, a decreased heart rate, I'll have a elevated heart rate. Instead of bronchoconstriction, bronchodilation, if I had um, that's a, if I had increased sweat, then it's going to be decreased sweat. You're going to be dry. Um, instead of increased peristalsis, it's going to be the opposite. You're going to have the, uh, a decreased peristalsis, which is going to be your constipation. And so that's where you'll see that, that sta statement that's in your book, hot as a hair, right? Because it's increased temperature. Why? Because you're not sweating. You can't cool yourself. You're dry as a bone. Why? Why? Because you're, again, uh, everything's down. It's, it's, you're not, you're not wet. You're, you're dry. Um, so if you're dry on the inside, you're going to think constipation and stuff. Um, etc. Blind as a bat, hot as a hair, uh, and so on. But back to this question. This young girl, this this young girl whose family works on a farm. So what do you think? So what do you think that her family is exposed to when they're working on these local farms? Pesticide, right? And so pesticide can can have too much what? It can have too much acetylcholine, so maybe when when he comes home, it's on his shoes, it's on his clothes, 
Um, you know, who knows? Um, but this is something new because it only started after the, after they relocated here and she's having these symptoms of what? She's having symptoms of what? Cholinergic excess. Now, that would have been nice if they would have put that answer choice here. But is it is it but let's look at what we got left. Is it inhibition of muscarinic receptors? You know, inhibition of these guys would give us the too little. Is it inhibition of nicotinic receptors? You know, kind of this kind of the same thing. It, it would give give too little. <clears throat> and just so you know, we have nicotinic muscarinic and nicotinic uh nicotinamide, I think. So, anyways, uh this is more muscular contraction, and then this is CNS and brain, so symptoms like headache and things like that. Anyway, so total side note. Um, is it inhibition of these guys? No, because it's not inhibition. In inhibition would be anticholinergic. This is cholinergic excess. It's activation of muscarinic receptors would explain her type of symptoms. What from? Probably exposure uh, to, I don't know if you can call it organophosphates. Um, basically exposure to um, toxins, okay? Cholinergic excess is giving you these symptoms. But you got to know the basics. If you understand the mechanism of acetylcholine, very, very important. You can get too much, and they're going to test you on exposure to organophosphates, or it's going to be too little, where obviously when if a patient is given anticholinergic medications, or there's been questions about people exposed to certain, you know, when they're out cleaning the yard and things like that, exposure to certain plants that are very anticholinergic, which can lead into this. Either way, you're dealing with these muscarinic or nicotinic receptors. It's either too much or too little. But for this question, the correct answer choice is going to be E, activation of the muscarinic receptors. Hope it was helpful, guys. All right, guys. So this question, I uh, kind of, is, you know, I've seen in QBanks before, and, you know, I did a little research on it. And there's actually, the reason why I put it was from the family getting it is because there was actually some studies, some research done uh, this one's from the Indian Journal of Occupational Environmental Medicine, 2010, uh, August, and it talked about how people who work in, I think it was mango, uh, I want to say it was like mango fields or something like that. Anyways, they were sprayed with pesticides and they would bring bring it home to their families. Uh, and it just showed the symptoms and actually gave the mechanism and such. So it was really interesting. I thought, I thought it would make a great question. So hope it was helpful, guys. Mm -hmm.